<clears throat> hey students, welcome back to Diksha Vedantu channel. This is your master teacher Navya and today we will be continuing with the chapter resources and development. Right, so already I have started this chapter in the previous session. Right, so in this session we will be continuing. Right, so let's see what are all the topics that we will be covering in this particular chapter. Right, see already I told you know that I have covered uh, resources part. Huh. Already in the previous session I spoke about what are resources. Right, and then we even spoke about the classification of resources. Right, after that we studied about the development of resources wherein we spoke about sustainable development and that earth summit and all that. After that we even spoke about resource planning and resource planning in India. Right, in today's session, in today's session we will be continuing with land resources which is then followed by soil resources. Right, so yeah. Are you all ready for today's session? And if you have not yet joined our telegram channel, then do join our telegram channel Diksha Vedantu class 9th and 10th. The telegram channel link is in the description, right? So by joining our telegram channel, what are the advantages that you will get? Is that, see every day we will provide practice questions and also everyday sessions PDF will be provided and also weekly mock test will be conducted and there will be weekly interactive session as well, right? Along with that we will also assign certain, we will provide you certain assignments as well. Clear with that? And this chapter's notes will be provided after completing this session. I saw there was some student who was asking for the notes of this chapter resources and development right so today after completing this session i will be providing you the notes of this particular session right clear with that okay so once we'll recall uh, that i'll just recall what i have done in the previous session okay so the chapter name says it is resources and development right so first we started with uh, uh, by understanding we started this session by understanding what are resources what are resources and then how is that resource classified on what basis it is classified right so what are resources i said that see a substance or else any substance which is present in our environment which is present in our environment and we utilize that substance for, for our own benefit. Then we call that substance as resource. See that substance must be of some use for us. Right. For that sake we just cannot consider every substance as a resource. Right. So for a substance to be a resource that substance will have to fulfill three criteria. I had mentioned that in the previous session. Right. What are all those three criteria? The first criteria is it has to be technologically accessible and then it has to be economically feasible and the third criteria is it has to be culturally acceptable only then that substance will be considered as a resource right and then i also told you all that human being is the important component of resource why because human being is the one who is capable of interacting with the nature he interacts with the nature technology institution and all that why for transforming those substances into a resource which is useful for us it is for our own benefit right we did that and then we moved on to after that we moved on to the classification of resources wherein we saw that the resource it was uh, it was classified into several types on certain basis, right? The first one was on the basis of origin. On the basis of origin, the resource was classified into two types. One is biotic and the other one is abiotic. Biotic resources are those resources which are obtained from the living organism. On the other hand, abiotic resources are those resources which are obtained from non-living things. Non-living, right? That was on the basis of origin that is from where are we getting the resource that was the first classification which we saw and then the second one was on the basis of exhaustibility 
wherein again on the basis of exhaustibility the resources was divided into two types renewable resource and non renewable resource what is renewable resource renewable resources are those resources which can be produced again okay it will not get exhausted even if it gets even if it get over we can produce it again in a shorter period of time whereas on the other hand non renewable resources are those resources which cannot be reproduced very easily now for example coal see what if the coal fossil fuel what if it gets exhausted do you think the uh, the upcoming generation will be able to access to those coal to those fossil fuel no right they will have to wait for the formation of fossil fuel for billions of years right so that is an example for non renewable resources right and then what was the third classification which we saw it was on the basis of ownership that is who owns that particular resource based on that there were four types of resource one was individual second was community third was national and the fourth one was international right uh, talking about individual resource best example that i gave was a garden see garden is owned by one particular individual right so that is individual resource what about community resource for community resource i gave you examples like pond that is present in village and uh, then what else picnic spot park all this is owned by particular community so that is considered as community resource right and the third one was national resource national resource it is those those are the resources which is actually owned by state government or central government right for example your roadways railways and you know certain uh, mining areas and all that that is owned by either central or state government right and then we also saw international international resources for example uh, sea navigation flights and all that is controlled by you know it falls under international resources right we studied that and even i spoke about exclusive economic zone as well right see from our coastal line from our coastal line 200 nauticals away 200 nauticals region from the coastal line that falls under that is under our nation that is national resource beyond the 200 nautical it is considered as open ocean right and for utilizing a resource which is present in that open ocean we will have to first seek permission from the international international institutions right we spoke about all that under classification and the third one which i told was that ownership and then the fourth classification which we saw was it was based on the status of development again over there there were four types right what were there there were the first one was potential resource the second one was developed resource third one was stock and the fourth one was reserve so like this we covered the classification of resource right what was that potential resource what was uh, what uh, what are the resources that fall under potential resources so the potential resources are those resources which are present in abundance but then we don't have sufficient technology to utilize them for example uh, the wind energy in rajasthan see over there the wind energy is very good in rajasthan in gujarat in gujarat wind energy is really very good but then there is no sufficient windmill yes windmills are there but sufficient amount of windmill is not present so there is abundant of resource but then the technology they lack technology even in rajasthan solar energy is good but then they lack technology so such type of resources fall under potential resources what about developed resources see developed resources are those resources they are present in abundance and we also have technology to utilize them right but what is the problem over here is nothing but see it is the resource is well developed but then however the extent to which it is developed that particular resource that depends upon the quality of the technology that is used over there and also the feasibility right so the development of that resource it depends upon how good quality technology that is being used and also the feasibility also matters in developed resource and then third one was stock wherein the resources which are present in abundance but then we don't have the technological knowledge to utilize them that is stock resource on the other hand reserve resources are those resources 
that are present in abundance and we even have the technological knowledge to extract them but then purposely we are not exploring that resource. Why? Because we are reserving that for the future generation. So, these were the different uh, types of resources which we have covered in the previous session. Right? And then we studied about sustainable development also. What is sustainable development? Why is it important? See, I told you right now, see there are there is good amount of resource that is present in our environment. Now, what if we just use those resources randomly? What happens? Obviously, they will get exhausted. So, if you just like that, if you use resources, see, we, we have to use resources. Why? For development. Development is also important, right? For development to happen, we require technology, we require industry for manufacturing and all that, for which we will have to utilize resources. But then, if we use those resources randomly, just like that, without planning, then what happens? We will, without our knowledge, we might use too much of resource, right? We might use too much of resource, then what happens? There will be depletion of resource and then a division will be created in a society. See, because when a particular resource is depleted, obviously, the cost of that resource will increase. Right. When a particular substance is no longer present in our environment or if getting that particular substance is very hard, then what will people do? They will increase the cost of that particular thing, right? The same thing happens over here also. So, when there is depletion of particular resource, then the value of that resource will increase because of which only rich people can buy those resources whereas poor cannot afford to buy. That's why there will be division in the society as well and also too much utilization of resources will also lead to certain environmental problems like uh, global warming, ozone layer depletion and you know even pollution, land degradation and all that. Therefore, planning is very important, resource planning is very important. So, See, I am not saying that, that we should not use resources and all that. See, what I meant to say is that, yes, development is important. Development should take place, but not at the cost of environment. That is, without damaging the environment. So, such type of development, which is done without damaging the environment, that development is called a sustainable development. So, we spoke about that sustainable development and even we spoke about that earth summit and all that, right? After that, we understood that why resource planning is important, right? Clear with that? So, in the previous session, we have covered these topics. Now, in today's session, we will be starting with land resources. We will be starting with land resources. So, students, do you have any doubts? Any doubts? in the topics that I have covered in the previous session that is resources, classification of resources, sustainable development or uh, resource planning. Any questions? If any, if you have any doubts, feel free to comment in the comment section. Okay. So, I hope uh, that the topics are clear till now. Right. So, now we'll move on to land resources. So, now what is the importance of land resources? So, before getting into the topic, the importance of land resources, what are land resources? First, let us try to understand that how important the land is. What is the importance of land alone? Right. So, we all know that, see, where are we all living? See, we all exist on land. Right. And all the crop cultivation, everything is done on land. Right. So, there is nothing wrong in me saying that land, land supports, land supports vegetation, land supports vegetation, it supports us, that is human beings, it supports us and also it supports wildlife. Not just that, it also supports transportation, right? All the roadways, railways, they are constructed on land only, no? So, it supports transportation, transportation and also communication, communication and, and if I start naming, no, it just goes on and 
so many other activity also and so many so many other activities All right so land is one of the like it is like the basis of every life form that is present on earth right land is a basis of every life form that is present on earth because it supports vegetation human beings wildlife transportation communication and much more construction of building everything is done on land right so land is very very important right so now see this land it acts as a vital it is a vital natural resource for sustaining life and economic activities and economic activities right so now we are getting into the topic land resources okay so here the india is you know india has got a diverse relief feature diverse relief feature now these diverse relief feature they provide opportunity for various forms of human activities okay fine now there is a term that is called as relief feature what is meant by relief feature let me write down here what is meant by see india has got it says that india has got a diverse land relief relief features what is meant by land relief feature can anyone guess ki what is this relief feature talking about see this relief feature it is talking about what is it talking about it is talking about the it is talking about elevation elevation there is a term that is called as elevation it is talking about the different elevation of various polit uh, various physical and geographical factors right so this relief feature is talking about various see it is talking about a different elevation of various physical and geographical factor now what do i mean by elevation what is meant by elevation elevation is nothing but height it is nothing but height right now what do you think see the land that is present in our country now let's focus on those area that is present within the boundary of our nation within a country right do you think the land it is it of same level do you think the height is of same no right so that is elevation so this that's what it says the di india's diverse relief feature relief feature is talking about the different elevation in our country right so now when i ask you to compare now for example uh, there are mountains there are plateaus there are plains right now uh, which one do you think has got more elevation is it mountain or plateaus which one do you think which one has got more height obviously it is mountains right mountain has got more elevation when you compare with plateaus and plateaus have got more elevation when you compare with plains so which means to say that the land the level is not equal the height varies right so in our nation we have plains mountains and plateaus there is 27% of plateaus right and then 43% of plains and then 30% of 30% of mountains right and we all know that mountain mountain is a good source of river it is a good it is a good source of river it is a good source of river and also it supports tourism right what about plains plains they are suitable for agriculture they are suitable for agriculture and also for you know uh for constructing buildings and all that for uh, for human settlement for human settlements for human settlement and what about plateaus these are good source of fossil fuel fossil fuels and then forests mining and all that
right so that's how that's what it says india has got diverse relief feature that is the level of the land is not equal because of the difference in the elevation because of the difference in the elevation we have plains we have mountains and we have plateaus see their height differs and also their the source also varies the uh, benefits that they provide also varies for example mountain they are good source of river and also it is uh, known for tourism also it is like tourist spot also mountains and then plain plains it supports agriculture why because in the plains there is uh, the amount of soil that is present and also the nutrient that is present in the soil is very good maybe the soil that is present in the plain they are well fertile that's why it supports agriculture whereas when it comes to plateau they are good source of you know fossil fuel forest mining and all that clear with that so this is how India has got diverse relief feature clear and now let's see now you got to know yes in India the la the level of land the the you know the level it varies they does not have same elevation because of which there are different types of properties that you get to see in our nation right so now let's see the land that is present in our country what is it utilized for some region are utilized uh, like you know they fall under the forest region right that is used wherein you get to see more of wildlife and all that and then the second one is the land that is not available for the cultivation do you agree with that see in our country there are so so large area of land which is not actually utilized for cultivation they are considered as barren and wasteland see the land if it is left without use over a period of time then it will be converted into wasteland because over there there will be the sea soil will not be enriched with the nutrients and all that it will be left without taking care so that will over a period of time that will get converted into barren land okay and then also the land that is put to non-agricultural use nothing but it is for human purpose for constructing building roads hospital railways schools and all that it is used for that purpose also so the land it is used for forest and it is also used for non-agricultural practices and then other uncultivated land excluding fallow land we'll talk about fallow land what it is Anta. Okay, so Ivaga other uncultivated lands are one is the permanent pastures and grazing land. See, there are land, there are certain regions where it is particularly used for grazing, and sometimes overgrazing leads to land degradation. We will talk about la land degradation as we go further. Now, just try to understand that see, in within a nation, the land is utilized for what are all for what are all the purpose we are using land one is for forest and other one is for human settlements and all that and also there are certain land which is you know it is of no use they are just it is just left without taking care that will be converted into barren land and then also there are certain area where it is used for grazing right along with that there are land under certain miscellaneous tree crop grow which is not included in net zone area so there are certain land which is not included in net zone area we will study about that as well okay there is something that is called as net zone area and there is one more term which is called as gross gross crop area so we'll talk about all this in the next slide okay so there are certain region that is used for net zone area and also gross zone area right and along with that cultural waste land that is a land which is not cultivated for more than five years for more than five years it is just left as it is initially maybe there was cultivation that was going on but then all of a sudden they, that land was uh, left unused for which is left unused uncultivated for more than five years that land is considered as cultivable waste land you must remember all these terms because from this topic from this only they might ask mcq questions right like they might ask the unleft uh, uncultivated land which is left for more than five agricultural year what is that land called as they might ask question so that is called as culturable waste land okay clear with that and then the fourth one is it is used for fallow lands see fallow land is very simple see here the 
there is again under fallow land there are two types one is current fallow and the other one is other than current fallow in case of current fallow see here it is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year see and one more thing fallow land is nothing but see let's say that this is uh, let's say this is the agricultural field so this is our agricultural field okay and then this entire field will be ploughed and the soil will be nourished with the nutrients okay but then but then the crops are sown in only this region the crops are sown only in this region whereas this region it is not used for cultivation but then here the soil in this region the soil is taken care even over there ploughing is done and then the soil is also enriched with good amount of nutrients and all that but then this region is just left as it is just left as it is whereas in this region cultivation takes place cultivation takes place but then this region is also taken care right so now this region where the crops are not sown but then the soil is taken care that region is called as fallow fallow land that region is called as fallow land understood the difference between fallow land and the uncultured land uncultivated land so you understood the difference between the uncultivated land and the fallow land see the fallow land over there the entire land is actually it is ploughed the soil is nourished with the nutrients but then only in some region the crops are sown and it is grown whereas in certain region the crops are not grown maybe in the boundaries that region is called as fallow land and if that region if even over there if they don't sow any crops even in the next agricultural year even if it is one or more one or less than one agricultural year that is called as current fallow whereas the other one is other than current fallow is if that region is left uncultivated for one to five agriculture one to five agricultural year then it is called as other than current fallow so you understood the difference between the culturable wasteland current fallow and other than current fallow clear with this concept students understood right that what is fallow land see in case of culturable waste in case of culturable waste land actually it is cultivable it is cultivable waste land in case of cultivable waste land the thing is entire land is just left as it is where the agriculture does not take place okay they don't do agriculture for more than 5 years then that is called as cultivable waste land it is cultivable 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 waste land whereas in case of fallow land what is happening only in the borders only the entire land is taken care but in the borders it is just left as it is over there the crop is not sown that is fallow land and if it is left for one or less than one year it is called as current fallow land if it is left for one year or more than one to five year then it is considered as other than current fallow land okay clear with that fine and the next one is net sown area so there is something that is called as net sown area and there is one more term that is gross gross crop area and i know that most of the students they think that both this net sown area and gross sown area is same hi hi everyone good afternoon to one and all okay so here the net sown area is abbreviated as nsa and then the gross crop area is abbreviated as gca so now what is net sown area net sown area is the area where the crop is sown where the crop is sown and the cultivation happens 
okay it is talking about the area whereas gross crop area is that within that particular area how many times the crop is sown that is considered in gross crop area now let me give you all an example let's say that this is a field okay this is a field okay there is three region let me divide this field into three areas okay so area a b and c okay so this area it is uh, over there it is not fit for cultivation so it is un cultivated it is uncultivated land okay so this is uncultivated land okay whereas b this region over here the crop is sown once a year over here crop is sown yearly once yearly once okay whereas in case of this in case of this in case of this region the crop is sown twice crop is sown twice okay so now when they ask you to calculate the net sown area the net sown area that time you will consider this region b as well as you will consider this region c because it is in region a in the area a and in the area c the crop is sown and the cultivation is taking place so your net sown area net sown area is equal to c plus b because they are talking about the area where the crop is sown they are not bothered about how many times it is they are not bothered about how many times it is sown okay and when it comes to gross crop area when it comes to gross crop area here they are counting see crop area how many times the crop is sown that is considered so for that what are they going to do so first b they will consider b over here in this region the crop is sown only once a year so this is one and then i told you in this region in this field the crop is sown twice right so b plus c plus c okay so how will you calculate gross gross crop area gross crop area can you see this see b plus c b plus c is over here so you can calculate like this right gross crop area is equal to net sown area plus c plus this c you will get the gross crop area that is how many times the crop is sown in that one agricultural year whereas if you to ask about if in case if they ask the net sown area it will talk about the area in which the crop is sown in that one agricultural year okay so you understood the difference between net sown area and gross crop area students clear with this this is one of the important concept this is one of the important concept from which the question can be asked that what is net sown area okay clear with that okay so yeah now we'll move on to the land use pattern in india so till now we covered that what is what are how what how is this land land very important for us we started up started with the importance of land we spoke about land elevation that is land relief feature india has got a diverse land relief feature so i explained about what is that relief feature all about that relief feature is talking about the elevation the different elevation of uh, the geographical factors right that is nothing but the level of the land throughout a nation it is not the same the height varies so there is mountain there is plateau there is plain mountain has got the mountain has got uh, mountains they are very high whereas plateau it is bit less compared to mountain whereas plain they are more lesser than the plateau and mountain we saw that and then we saw that how is our land being utilized in our nation right okay so now let's talk about the land use pattern in india okay so now how see now i told you that yes the land is utilized for these purpose and all that right how did they find out that uh, it is utilized for this purpose 
it is with the help of physical factors and also human factors okay physical factors like topography climate soil type and all that they will study the soil type they will study the climate over there see in our nation the climatic condition it varies from one place to another place it does not remain same right so they'll study about climatic condition soil type and all that now what is topography can anyone say what is topography students what is topography see topography it is the study of earth surface it is the study of earth surface so by studying with the help of topography by studying and also by studying the climatic condition in that particular region and also the soil type we can determine that like in which place for what purpose that land is utilized okay clear with that and also human factors human factors like we will study about the population density how much people stay in that particular region and also technological capability of that particular region and also the culture and tradition that is followed in that particular region based on that we can identify that for what purpose the land is used in that particular region and how much it is used and all that okay clear with that and i also spoke about net zone area nothing but in that particular land they are talking about agricultural land where uh, the area in which the crop was sown right so that tells the net zone area that is in our nation in which we can identify that in which state in which state the crop can be like uh, where the uh, cultivation is high we can identify that with the help of this crop uh, the net zone area right so when they identified when they compared the net zone area of each state that is present in our nation they found out that the net zone area in punjab and uh, haryana was very high it was very high it was over 80% it was over 80% whereas in the eastern country north eastern states the net zone area was very less in the states like arunachal pradesh mizoram manipur and andaman nicobar island over there it was very less that it was like less than 10% the net zone area was less than 10% which means to say that over there the cultivation is very less okay the land that is utilized for cultivation is less right so like this by with the help of those physical factors and human factors we can identify that for what purpose the land is used in that particular region okay clear with that fine so now but then the problem is the problem is we human being we utilize land see it is also a natural resource but then because of too much human activities and also because of too much of natural forces what happens is that what happens is that it leads to the degradation of the land it leads to degradation of the land okay so there is a student who says that the soil types that uh, proportion any shortcut to remember uh, as of now i am doing this land degradation one as we go further i'll be explaining about other types of soil also so when we are doing that we will learn to remember them okay that time i will you know we will make some shortcuts after some 2 to 3 slides we'll be starting with the soil resources that time we will we will make shortcuts to remember those uh, about the soils different types of soils and all that see the thing is when you're studying about soil resources no always if possible try to create the tabular column or else no worries i will pre i will create the tabular column for that and provide it to you so that it will be easy for your revision right like always when you're studying about soil resources you will have to talk about uh, the where location where is it found and what are the what is the composition is there any types and uh, what does it support and all that so now we'll uh, try to you know study when we're studying that we'll try to make some shortcuts to remember them and also I, if you if you people want if you students want i can provide you the tabular column also so that it will be easy for you all to revise during your exam time okay so yeah where was i yeah i was talking now we started with land degradation so yeah the problem is that see we human beings at times without our knowledge we tend to you know uh, use particular resource so much that we end up damaging them right so because of so too much of human activities and also because of certain natural forces 
it has caused some damage to our land now what happens if the quality of the land gets degraded it will directly impact us right so now let's see what are all those human activities which are actually degrading our land it is actually overgrazing like i told you that a certain land certain area in our nation it is uh, you where the overgrazing happens right when there is overgrazing what happens those animals over there the grass everything will be eaten by the animals and there'll be no plants over there and when there is huge wind pressure when there is huge amount of wind pressure what happens that soil will be taken away by the wind because of which the nutrient content that is present in the soil will be lost so that is how overgrazing is actually damaging the land and the other one is mining and quarreling and exclusively for very longer period when it is done for very longer period over an area it can lead to land degradation it can lead to land degradation not just that even over irrigation over irrigation also it washes away all the nutrients that is present in the soil right so all that anything that is you know that's what we should be in a limit whenever you are using particular resource you will have to plan accordingly and then use or else it will lead to the degradation of that particular resource right see in states like jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh and odisha deforestation due to mining have caused several land degradation see deforestation is somewhat similar to overgrazing what happens in deforestation the trees and all that is cut so now there are no roots to hold that soil no roots to hold that soil right so what happens when there is heavy wind pressure or when the water flows it will wash away the nutrients that is present in the soil it will wash away the nutrient that is present in the soil right and then in states like gujarat rajasthan gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh and maharashtra the overgrazing is the major contribution for the land degradation and students you you will have to remember that in which state what is the cause for la land degradation now in case of like i told you jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh and odisha over there deforestation is the cause for land degradation right and in case of in case of gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh and maharashtra overgrazing is the cause for land degradation right and what about punjab and haryana i told you know in punjab and haryana the net net zone area is huge the net zone area is high right so now what happens over there the cultivation is more so over there irrigation system will be there and so in play in states like punjab haryana western uttar pradesh over there the over irrigation is the cause for land degradation okay and also sometimes you would have seen right in case of uh, cement industry in case of cement industry what happens the limestone is what what are they doing they are grinding too much of limestone and in case of ceramic industry in case of ceramic industry calcite and soap stones they are uh, grinded very much because of which there is lot of dust that is released right so when there is too much of dust that is released then it will affect the infiltration of the water into the soil now what is meant by infiltration of water it is nothing but see when the water when it reaches the soil what happens that water molecule will have to penetrate into the soil but then because of too much of dust particle that is released from the cement industry and also ceramic industry what happens those dust particle it will retard the infiltration of water into the soil because of all this what is happening it is degrading our land it is degrading our land okay now you understood now that what is the cause for land degradation it is deforestation over irrigation and uh, then what else over grazing all these are the reason and then there are certain industries from which too much of dust is released that too when they grind the limestone calcite and also soapstone and all that these dust particles they actually prevent the penetration of water into the soil and eventually all these activity will lead to land degradation it will lead to land degradation now the question is now the question is how can we protect this how can we prevent this condition how can we prevent this condition so now we will have to what protect our land how can we do that by afforestation by planting trees 
right and then also proper management of grazing i told you know yes grazing can be done but not over grazing okay certain measures will have to be taken and then planting of shelter belts now what is shelter belts shelter belt is nothing but it is nothing but the trees and plants they are you know uh, grown in one particular line they are grown in one particular line okay and then the stabilization of sun dunes what is meant by sun dunes sun dunes is nothing but see in the desert area like rajasthan and all that by growing thorny bushes like this by growing thorny bushes like this we can prevent the land degradation and this is called as sun that is called as sand dunes okay and then proper management of wasteland i told you know uh, certain region in within our nation uh, within our country certain land uh, it is left uncultivated when it is left uncultivated for more than 5 years what happens that land will eventually turn into that will eventually turn into barren land right which will be of no use because that land will not be taken care where proper the soil is not enriched with the uh, nutrients and all that so that will turn into barren land right and also therefore those uncultivated land has to be managed properly they will have to be managed properly and then we'll have to control mining activity also right along with that and also from industries lot of effluents they will be dis discarded without proper treatment so that will have to be treated right so the discharge and the disposal of the industrial effluents and the waste after treatment can reduce land and water degradation in the industrial and suburban areas okay clear with that so by you know considering all this we can actually prevent land degradation so what are the causes for land degradation it is deforestation overgrazing over irrigation right and also uh, there are certain industries which uh, the dust particle that is released from industry what what it does is that it will retards the penetration of water into the soil which is called as infiltration of water right that when the infiltration of the water is affected it will lead to land degradation so now how can we overcome land degradation by afforestation and you know a uh, proper managing of uh, we should pre we should prevent that overgrazing and all that we should not let that happen along with that shelter belts right planning in planting of shelter belts right and also growing thorny bushes in a uh, certain that is called as sand dunes sand dunes are nothing but growing thorny bushes like this to prevent the loss of you know uh, the soil the nothing but the loss of sand particles usually this is done in the desert area like rajasthan okay along with that the waste land have to be managed and then uh, the effluent before it is being discarded outside that will have to be treated properly okay so by following all this we can prevent land degradation okay clear with that so that was all about that was all about land resources wherein we studied the importance of land resources right and then uh we studied the importance of land resources and then we spoke about uh the land relief feature right after that we studied about land utilization for for what purposes it is being utilized and then we spoke about land degradation and also how can you prevent the land degradation so we are done with the land resource part so now i have a quiz for you all i want you all to answer to these questions okay so the first question is the land left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year is called as that is called as any guesses option a says culturable waste land option b says current fallow land option c says waste land and option d says none of the above so let me see how many students are there i want you all to answer what is the answer for this question is it option a is it option a b c or d see here a land is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year so it is less than one agricultural year 
a land is left so do you think it is culturally waste cult it is culturable waste land or else is it current fallow land or is it waste land or is it none of the above it is option b current fallow land okay so the second question which one of the following is the main cause of land degradation in punjab what is the main cause for the land degradation in punjab is it intensive cultivation or is it deforestation or is it over irrigation or option d says over grazing which one is the right answer students which one is the right answer is it see in punjab what did i say the net zone area is very high so therefore what do you think which one is the right option it is over irrigation over irrigation is the right answer okay fine so the next question see the land that is left uncultivated for more than 5 agricultural year it is left uncultivated for more than 5 agricultural year is called as option a says pasture land option b says cultivable waste land option c says barren land and option d says current fallow which one is the right answer see the land is left it is left uncultivated for 5 years for 5 years so which one do you think which one is the right answer which one is it cultivable waste land or barren land or pasture land or current fallow it is cultivable waste land okay so the cultivable waste land it will be uh, a area which is left uncultivated for more than 5 years when it comes to current fallow land it is that region in that agricultural field where uh, that one particular region over there the crop is not sown so if it is not sown for one year or less than one year then that is called as current fallow land and in case if it is left as it is for uh, one or more than one year then it is called as other than current fallow land okay clear with that fine so the next question is so the now we'll be starting with okay so now we'll be starting with soil resources we are done with land resources and now we'll be talking about soil resources what what student is chapter say long questions you mean you mean five mark questions they they might ask you you can't you know expect but then mostly uh, they will ask three mark questions two mark questions like that okay five mark also they might ask you cannot predict so first you will have to be thorough with each and every concept they might ask they might ask okay so now we are talking about soil resources see soil is one of the soil is also one of the important hi nidhi hi so yeah soil is one of the important resources just like land why do you think so because soil is the one it it is supporting our survival but then how because it is with the help of soil and you know the cultivation is possible if the soil is very fertile right so soil it supports the growth of plant and other life form and every life form that is present on earth is directly or indirectly dependent on is dependent on plant right so the soil is very very important so in this particular topic uh, the soil uh, soil uh, resources part we will be we will be studying about the classification of soil and then we'll study about soil uh erosion and also conservation of the soil okay so hi students hi vidya here this channel uh, is will have to teach in english so if you want in hindi we will we will provide you the link for that as well so here we are particularly focusing on all every students even the south indian as well as the north indian that's why it's in english okay so yeah we'll study about the classification of soil now okay 
So first one is, see in our nation, see the climatic condition changes and also I told you the elevation also varies nothing but the land uh, the level is not same everywhere the height varies from one place to another place climatic condition varies right even the texture of the soil even the nature of the soil also varies also varies right okay so now we'll get to see so in different part of a country there are different types of soil we will study about each one Fine. The first one is the first one is alluvial soil. The first one is alluvial soil. Right. So now, see. Let's. Whenever you are studying about the soil part, first thing that you will have to remember is what from where from where is it deposited or what is the composition, where is it located, and which type of plant can be grown in that particular region and all that. Okay. So yeah it is deposited by three important himalayan river it is deposited by three important himalayan river okay there is a student that is arun what is your name ma okay my name i am this is navya i teach biology geography and will also be handling economics for you all okay majorly it is biology okay. so yeah see it is uh, the northern plains what the entire northern plains are made of alluvial soil okay so here it is deposited by three important river three important himalayan rivers okay namely indus ganga and brahmaputra okay so where do you see this alluvial soil we get to see this alluvial soil in the rajasthan and gujarat through a narrow corridor and also and also you it is found in the eastern coastal plains particularly in mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri in these region you get to see the alluvial soil see the red color thing that is marked in the map these are the region where alluvial soil, soil is found okay clear see now which type of the soil is mostly found in the northern plain in northern plain is it red yellow soil or alluvial soil which is found in northern plain i just mentioned right which is that soil that is found in northern plain come on comment in the comment section which soil is found in the northern plain it is it is alluvial soil all right so this alluvial soil i told you you get to see see it is deposited by Three Himalayan river, three Himalayan river, right? Which one? Indus, Ganga, and Brahmaputra. So now, the the soil that is in the upper reaches of the river valley over there, the soil, the soil is cows. The soil is cows is nothing but over there the soil particle is bit granular type. It is bit granular type. Okay, and then such soil are more common in Piedmont plain. It is more common in Piedmont plain. Now, what is meant by Piedmont plain? Any guesses, student, that what is meant by Piedmont plain? See, it is actually a land which is slopey. It is a land which is slopey, and that is actually arising from the mountains. From the mountains, it will be see from the mountains, the land will be slopey, and finally, it will be it will reach the plains. It will be a bit flat. Okay, and then. Now, pavement plain such as rose and all this. Now, on the basis of the age of alluvial soil. Now, on the basis of age of alluvial soil, it is of two types. One is bangar and the other one is kadar. See here, the bangar alluvial soil is the older one, whereas kadar alluvial soil is the newer one. Okay, the kadar alluvial soil is the newer one. And in case of bangar alluvial soil, it is mostly See, it is found above the flood level, whereas in case of Kadar, it is found below the it is found below the what flood plains, okay? And then this uh, Bangar soil, it is less fertile, whereas Kadar soil, it is more fertile. Why? Because in case of Kadar, the soil particles are very fine. They are very fine and they are new, right? So the texture also like it is 
the particle is fine and the color is also it is light whereas bunger it is over there the particles are very granular type they are very granular type therefore it is not fit for cultivation along with that they have uh, certain canker nodules canker nodules are nothing but they are uh, composed of calcium carbonate so such nodules are present in bunger uh, alluvial soil because of which because of which uh, it is not fertile okay and then see the alluvial soil as a whole are very fertile they are very fertile okay and then it contains adequate proportion of potash phosphoric acid and lime which are ideal for the growth of sugarcane paddy wheat and other cereals and pulses crop okay so krishu krishu asked that yes krishu i'm actually a science graduate but then i have got teaching experience okay i've already taught students who were preparing for competitive exams which has got social studies in them like history polity geography and all that so before starting year i was teaching there also for like exams like uh, ssc upsc and all that i was teaching them that's why i have experience in social science also right but the online teaching is yeah from past 6 months it is online teaching before that i was doing offline okay so i have knowledge in both biology as well as social okay you don't worry fine so this alluvial soil this alluvial soil it is see i told you in that kadar soil it is very much fertile that is very much fertile right therefore this soil it it has got adequate proportion of potash and phosphoric acid and lime in them whereas it is not bunger soil bunger soil it has got calcium carbonate okay this composition is present in kadar soil which is a which is a new alluvial soil that is more fertile therefore it can support the growth of sugarcane paddy wheat and other cereals and pulses pulse crop okay the soil in the dry area are more alkaline so this soil i told you it is found in the river valley also and also near mountains as well so the one that is found near the mountain they are bit dried okay and they are their nature is alkaline and their nature is alkaline okay fine and then the second type is black soil or it is it can also be called as rigor soil or black cotton soil okay so because in black soil we mostly grow cotton that's why it is called as black cotton can anyone guess ki what is meant by deccan trap can anyone guess what is meant by deccan trap see here you know the molds of the uh, wall you know the hi hero hi yeah so you know the molds of that uh, volcano right after it solidifies after it solidifies you get that substance no that is your black soil that is black soil okay so they cover the plateau of where where is it found in maharashtra okay and madhya pradesh mostly in maharashtra madhya pradesh and chatisgarh these are the three main region where you get to see where you get to see where you get to see the black soil and extent in it is also extended in south east direction along the godavari and also krishna valley okay so yeah this is where so you understood now what is deccan trap deccan trap is nothing but the the volcano the mold that is the lava that comes out after the solidification of the lava you get this black soil okay and then the black soil is made up of extremely fine nothing but it is clay material it is made up of clay material it can hold it can hold moisture it has the capacity to hold moisture content right and they are rich in soil nutrients also they are rich in soil nutrients such as calcium carbonate magnesium potash and lime as well okay and then these soils are uh, these soil are they are generally poor in phosphoric content so remember this student see the phosphoric content was uh, rich in alluvial soil it was rich in alluvial soil but over here in black soil the phosphoric content is less the phosphoric content is less okay and they develop deep cracks see you would have seen of the black soil during summer when you see them uh, the crack would have developed on the surface so it is black soil that develops uh, deep crack 
when the the weather is very hot when the temperature is very high okay which helps in a proper aeration of the soil that helps in the proper it's because there is crack developed the air can penetrate in so what happens this helps in the proper aeration of the soil okay and then these soil are have you ever touched the black soil see they are a bit sticky and they'll be wet also so it will be very difficult to work unless it is tilted immediately after the first rainfall okay after the first shower during the pre monsoon period during the pre monsoon period okay clear with that so this is the homework question for you all i want you all to differentiate i want you all to comment the answer in the comment section the difference between the bangar and kadar soil bangar and kadar soil <laughs> yeah and then okay this is your homework question okay so now we have completed alluvial soil and black soil right so now i have questions for you all i want you all to answer to these question okay so the first question is which river systems have deposits of alluvial soil in northern plains of india is it ganga yamuna and godavari or is it mahanadi koshi and gandak is it krishna kaveri and godavari or option d says indus ganga and brahmaputra so hero says option a but then i told na when i was doing that uh, uh, alluvial soil it is uh, the deposits of three rivers himalayan rivers it is himalayan river one is old alluvial soil and the other one is new alluvial soil yes so students which which are those three river which are those three himalayan river let me give you all hint it is himalayan rivers here it is not option a it's not option a it is actually see what are all those three himalayan river it is indus ganga and brahmaputra it is indus ganga and brahmaputra okay and then next question which one of the following term is used to identify the old and new alluvial respectively right which one is that old and which one is that new yes here option d is the right answer right now in this question which one is the right answer which one is the old alluvial soil and which one is the new alluvial soil option a says kadar and tarai option b or is it option c or option d which one is old and which one is new alluvial soil so option c yes option c is the right answer okay next question the black soil lacks which of the following nutrient so the black soil i mentioned that the alluvial soil has got that particular nutrient whereas it is not present in the op, in the uh, black soil which one is that is it calcium carbonate or is it manganese or yes it is option c option c is no it is option d phosphorus phosphoric acid i told na it is phosphoric acid here it says potassium lime see the potassium lime is present in uh, alluvial soil but uh, not in uh, this one whereas phosphoric acid and uh, even the phosphoric acid is present in alluvial soil but it is not present in black soil black soil has got potassium lime also it does not have this phosphorus so option d is the right answer okay so yeah we are done with the alluvial soil and the black soil okay so any doubts till now any doubts you want me to repeat any other topic okay so now this is your homework question right i want you all to comment the answer for this question after the session is done okay fine so now we'll move on to red and yellow soil so again this red and yellow soil it is uh, obtained from igneous rock it is obtained from igneous rock in the low rainfall 
in the eastern and southern part of the Deccan Plateau. See, when, when we are studying about the soil now, first thing that you will have to mention is from where is the soil being obtained and the location of that soil and what, what is the composition of the soil and what does that soil support? Like which type of plant can be grown, which type of crop can be grown in that particular soil? That is very important. Okay. So, now I told you here it is igneous rock. So, here uh, see the black soil it is from uh, the Deccan trap right over here this is also same. So, here what happens is that the lava after it solidifies and after it cools down after it cools down then we will get this red and yellow soil and you see this mostly in the eastern and southern parts of the Deccan plateau. Okay, so it is seen in Odisha you get to see this uh, uh, red and yellow soil in Odisha, Chhattisgarh and also in southern part in southern parts of Middle Ganga plain and also along the Piedmont zone of the western Ghats. Okay, some soils, uh, the soil at times it develops red in color. Why is it red in color? Because of the diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rock. Okay, I told you know when that lava, when that lava solidifies and evaporates, that time what happens when the iron, if it diffuses into the crystalline and the metamorphic rock, that time the soil turns red in color and it turns yellowish, the, it occurs when it is in hydrated form. The soil appears yellow when it is in hydrated form. Okay, and the next one is laterite laterite soil so the laterite soil it is developed in the area where then where the temperature is very high where the temperature is very high and also there should be heavy rainfall okay the result of intense leaching due to the you get to see leaching also because i told you there is heavy rainfall because there is heavy rainfall right the humus content is low and over here the humus content is over here the humus content is very low okay and then it is suitable for the cultivation with adequate dose of manure and fertilizer. So, over here we will have to provide adequate amount of manure as well as fertilizer. Okay. And where do, you, where do we see this laterite soil? You get to see in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and the hilly areas of Odisha as well as Assam. Okay. And then it is useful for growing is it is useful for growing tea coffee and all that and also the red laterite soil see in laterite soil you get to see the proper red one where in tamil nadu andhra pradesh and kerala as well which is suitable for growing cashew nut which is suitable for growing cashew nut see only thing is over here you will have to remember how it is formed where is it located which type of crop can be grown that is very important okay Fine. So, now which type of soil is mostly found in Rajasthan? Is it laterite soil or arid soil? Which one? Is it laterite soil or arid soil? Which one? Any guesses? See, till now we have not done arid soil. And I didn't mention anywhere that it is found in Rajasthan and all that. Yes, alluvial it is found. But then now we'll talk about arid soil. Alluvial soil is also seen in Rajasthan, some parts of Rajasthan. Okay, and arid soil is, you get to see arid soil in Rajasthan also. See, this arid soil is, it ranges from red to brown in color. Okay, and due to dry climate, because of dry climate, high temperature and also evaporation is very fast, right? Over there, the soil, it does not have any humus or moisture content. It does not have any humus or moisture content. Okay, that's why the land, it appears, it appears like this, dried. Yes, arid soil, it is seen in Rajasthan, yeah. And students, one more thing, you would I know you would have answered before itself, but then by the time I get to see the answers, it will be a bit late, okay? So, I know you all are answering properly. Yeah. Yes, Eero, thank you. Yeah, now we'll focus on soil. Okay. 
So now the lower horizon of the soil are occupied by canker. I told you now the canker granules they are uh, actually composed of uh, calcium carbonate. Okay, the canker it is actually composed of calcium carbonate. So this soil it has got good amount of canker, nothing but it has got calcium carbonate. Okay, and then after proper irrigation, these soil becomes cultivable. Has been in in case of Western Rajasthan. So it will be dried, which lacks humus as well as it lacks humus as well as moisture content. Right? If proper irrigation system is if it is adopted, then then the land will be fit for cultivation. That's what they are saying. Okay. Fine. And next one. is the forest soil it is mostly found in it is mostly found in hilly mountainous area where the sufficient rain where the sufficient rain forests are available the name itself says forest soil you get to see mostly in hilly and mountainous region okay here they are loamy and silts see over here uh, the soil is actually it is fertile for uh, cultivation and also it has got it has got uh tiny minerals rock like substances okay and then in valley sites where where do you see them mostly in valley sites also and karos grain in the upper slots so over there the soil texture will be bit uh, grainy type also granule type so here the soil it is actually fit for cultivation it is fit for culti cultivation it will have minerals right it will have minerals rocky substances and even the soil will be granular granular type okay so in the snow covered area of himalayas these soil experience denudation and are acidic in nature and it is acidic in nature see we saw that alluvial soil alluvial soil in the dry area over there it is alkaline in nature whereas forest soil it is acidic in nature with low humus content with low humus content okay and then the soils found in the lower part of the valley are fertile the one that is found in the lower parts of the valley they are fertile which means to say that the one that is found above they are not fertile they are not fertile okay clear with that now what is denudation what is meant by denudation denudation is nothing but see the weathering of uh, the surface takes place for example when we move on to soil erosion over there i'll talk about denudation in depth okay fine so now this is a more question for you all that is what is human humus content in soil what is that humus content in soil and what is the difference between red yellow soil and laterin soil okay fine so now i want you all to answer to these questions Okay so the first question is which soil develops a reddish color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rock Okay option A says red soil option B says laterite soil option C says arid soil and option D says alluvial soil so which soil develops reddish color which soil develops reddish color due to the diffusion of iron i told you because of the diffusion of iron okay so there is a student who says red soil yes it is red soil okay and if it is hydrated if it is hydrated what happens yes ero says option a yes option a is the right answer red soil <coughs> what if the soil is hydrated it it is yellow okay and then which soil is formed as a result of intense leaching due to heavy rain which one option a says black soil option b says red soil option c says laterite soil option d says forest soil which one is the right answer okay siddharth no this is uh, this in this channel will be teaching completely in english so if you want in hindi there is another channel wherein if you want we'll provide you the link as well okay so here the intense leaching which one it is 
laterite. It is laterite soil. Yes, option C is the right answer. Fine. So, next question. Which soil is found in the hilly and mountainous area with the availability of sufficient rain forest? Option A says red soil. Option B says black soil. Option C says arid soil. And option D says forest soil. Yes, I know to speak in Hindi. <laughs> Why? But here we'll have to, in this channel, we'll have to teach in English. This is completely, this channel, in this channel, we'll be completely teaching in English. Yes, Hero says red soil. Hero, in the question itself, the answer is hidden. It is actually forest soil. Option D. Okay. Fine. So, now consider the following statement regarding the land degradation and choose the correct option. Okay. So, here the arid soil has high salt content. It says arid soil has got high salt content and then the next statement says the red soil is found in the hilly and mountainous area with availability of sufficient rainfall. So, see over here. Over here, arid, this is true, whereas this one is false. Okay? So, your answer is option A is the right answer. Okay? Fine. So, we have almost completed uh, the types of soil. Okay? Now, we will move on to soil erosion and conservation and one more thing students uh, today the notes of this particular session the complete chapter will be provided along with that if you all want then i can prepare a tabular column for the types of soil that is found in our nation see if you study that uh, that will be sufficient you will only have to know that uh, in which area the soil is uh, present okay so hi students See, uh, when I am explaining, no, it, it is bit, you know, to see the chat continuously, it is really difficult. See, once I complete particular topic, then I will respond to all your comments, students. Yes. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Krishu. Krishu, why Krishu? See, uh, Krishu, I am a science graduate. I have done my uh, MSc master. Plus, I was also teaching social studies for the UPSC aspirants and SSC aspirants before. I have studied both social as well as science. So, you don't worry about that. Okay. Who is this? Technical Bhavne. Bhavesh. Bhavnesh. Okay. Whoever it is. It is Technical Bhavnesh. Okay. Is it fine? I told you. I called out your name. Okay. So, shall we move on to where was I? I was telling that uh, the... Okay. So, I was telling that, uh, why? See, the thing is, I told you, you know, the red soil, sometimes what happens in that crystalline? See, how was that soil formed? I told you the larva after it uh, solidifies, after it cools down. During that process, in case if the iron diffuses into the crystalline, then if it diffuses into the crystalline, then what happens? The soil turns red. The soil turns red. Okay. And if the soil is hydrated, if it is hydrated, then it remains yellow. That's why in some region you get to see, that's why in some region you get to see the soil yellow and in some region it is uh, red in color. And one more thing, I was, before here, I was teaching offline. And this is the first online. Okay? Clear with that? So, shall I continue with the soil erosion students? If your doubts are cleared. Okay? Soil erosion and conservation. So, now this is homework question for you all. I want you all to answer to these questions. Okay. Why there is high salt content in arid soil? I want you all to answer to this question once the session is done. So, you can type your answers in the comment section. Okay. So, now we will move on to soil erosion and soil conservation. So, what is soil erosion? I told you the denudation. Denudation of the soil 
and then subsequent washing down is described as soil erosion. So, what is happening? What is uh, denudation? Let me explain you uh, the denudation with the help of uh, drawing. Okay, now let's say this is a rough diagram. Let's say this is a rock. Let's say this is a rock. You would have seen no, on the rock, there will be some cracks that will be developed over a period of time. Certain cracks will be very thin, whereas certain cracks will be bit there will be some space in between and you get to see rocks and all that. Right. See, always, always the denudation, in denudation, four phases takes place. The first one is weathering. Second one is erosion. Third one is transportation and the fourth stage is deposition. So, first we'll start with weathering. Over a period of time, what happens? The weathering of rocks takes place. How is weathering of rock taking place? Because of the, you know, uh, uh, certain factors like it can be wind, rainfall and all that. Because of the rain, because of wind, the weathering of rock occurs. Okay. See here, I told you the gap that is created is very less. Whereas over here, it is bit more. Right. <coughs> so, what happens over a period of time when the weathering takes place? See, you get to see particles like this. And then the second stage is erosion. And with the help of wind and all that, this particles will be transported and as it reaches particular suitable region over there it will get deposited that is denudation see over a period of time the weathering of rock takes place and from that the soil is formed okay the particles where the weathering takes place okay and then what happens is that but then some in some region that is what is called as denudation but sometimes what happens is that in particular region when there is too much of water flow or or else uh, when there is uh, in the region where uh, the deforestation has taken place over there there will be no trees or grasses to hold on to those to hold that soil so what happens when the wind is blown with heavy pressure then it will take away all the nutrients that is present in the soil and finally the region will become unfit for cultivation okay nothing but the soil it loses its fertility also okay it washes down subsequently washing down is described as certain important substances that are present in the soil will be washed away that is called as soil erosion so what what are all the reason there are two causes one is human activity and the other one is natural forces Okay, how is human activity ca causing soil erosion? Like I told you, deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining activities and also over irrigation. Okay, and also defective methods of farming using too much of fertilizers, pesticides and all that. Okay, when it comes to soil, I told you, I have already told you, deforestation mostly, you know, in uh, states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, MP and Odisha, over there, the, the land is getting degraded, nothing but the soil is getting, uh, uh, the soil erosion is occurring mostly because of deforestation. Whereas in the states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, MP and Maharashtra over there, because of overgrazing, soil erosion is taking place. Okay. And in case of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Orissa, because of mining activities, construction and mining activities, soil erosion is taking place. And in case of Punjab, Ariana, over there, I told you the the, I told you na, that net sown area is very high. It is uh, around 80%. So, over there the irrigation system is more because of over, over irrigation over the soil, soil erosion is taking place. And other natural factors like wind, water, glacier and all that and also formation of gullies and also sheet erosion and wind erosion. Because of all this, the soil erosion is taking place by the natural forces okay so look at this image in this 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 is how the gully erosion looks like see when the water washes away the soil content and all that that time such type of erosion takes place okay and this is band land over here it is because of the wind it's because of the wind over here the erosion has taken place and in case of sheet erosion the erosion it takes place uniformly you can see over here the the soil it has lost its particles its nutrients uniformly over that entire region okay and in case of real erosion real er erosion mostly you will see them in hilly region or in hilly region where when the water flows it creates a pathway like this wherein when the water flows through that 
pathway it washes away the important nutrients soil particles and all that along with it when it flows and it creates rill like this that's why it is called as rill erosion that's why it's called as rill erosion okay fine so now can you tell which of the following picture is an example of gully erosion is it option a or option b these are the soil erosion gully erosion bad land sheet erosion and drill erosion your exam point of view these three are very important gully erosion sheet erosion and drill erosion you just refer the previous year question papers you will mostly see questions from these sheet erosion gully erosion that too mostly gully erosion and drill erosion okay now can you tell which of the following picture is an example of gully erosion option a or option b which one Which one, students? It is option A. Option A is gully erosion. Okay. So now the different ways how we can prevent that soil erosion. How we can? Yes. So there is a student, Laksh, who answered. Student uh, Laksh Pranav. Yes, option A is the right answer. Yeah. Okay. So now talking about different ways of soil conservation. So now it is important for us to protect our soil from erosion. How can we do that? By plowing along the counter line. See, the plowing is very important. Counter plowing. Right. And then along with that, even terrace cultivation, terrace cultivation, strip cropping, shelter belts. All these by practicing all these by practicing all these we can prevent soil erosion. Fourth thing one is counter plowing. You would have seen you know, in that agricultural field uh, the with the help of tractor there will be uh, one equipment that will be dragged on the land and it will create lines like this in the field that is plowing why is it done it also what it does is it also removes the unwanted plants from the soil and also if there is any microorganism that will be removed and all that mostly it will remove unwanted plants and it will keep the soil fertile that's why it is done okay and then comes terrace cultivation where it restricts the soil erosion this type of agriculture it is this practice is done mostly in western and the central himalaya it is mostly done in western and central himalaya okay and then also strip cropping strip cropping is nothing but a particular pattern is followed a particular pattern is followed uh, while you know cultivation during cultivation the crop is sown in a particular fashion that will be sown in a particular fashion okay and then the plan here the uh, shelter belts is nothing but the shelter belt is nothing but see uh, the plant the plant or else the tree they are grown in a particular fashion for example they, they are grown in one line see if this is the land see if this is the land you would have seen right uh, the plants are grown like this they will be bit tall they will be of this height they will be grown like this and in between the crops will be sown certain plants certain important crops will be grown such type of pattern will be followed in case of uh, in case of shelter beds to prevent soil erosion okay clear with it this is how it looks like see crop rotation counter farming intercropping and then terracing shelter belt see like this can you see it is the the particular crop it is grown in one line it is grown in one line and also no tilt farming cover crop all these will all these will uh, prevent soil erosion all these will prevent soil erosion okay <coughs> so yeah we are almost done with this particular session now this is homework question for you all that is what is the difference between gully erosion and sheath erosion? Gully erosion and sheath erosion. 
I want you all to answer to these questions once the session is done. So, type your answers in the comment section. Okay. Fine. So, now I have got questions for you all. I want you all to answer to this. Okay. So, now in which one of the following places is terrace cultivation practiced? Where option A says Punjab, option B says Madhya Pradesh, option C says Central Himalaya, option D says Uttar Pradesh. Okay, Pranav, you want to know which is the chapter that has got highest mark. So, Pranav, I will make a separate shot on that wherein I will tell that which chapters are important in your geography, economics as well as biology. Okay, now let me complete this session. We, are all, we have almost come to an end. We will complete this session and I will upload that particular shots for you all. Okay, so now I want you all to answer to this question. Which one of the following place is terrace cultivation practiced? Which one? Is it Punjab or Madhya Pradesh, Central Himalaya or Uttar Uttra Pradesh? So Pranav says option C. Yash says option D. Actually, option C is the right answer. It is in the central Himalaya. Okay. And now, consider the following statement regarding land degradation and choose the correct option. So, in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha, overgrazing is one of the main reasons for land degradation. Do you agree with that? What do you think, student? Do you think, is this the right answer? A statement and it says in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra deforestation due to mining has caused severe land degradation. Out of these two statements, which one do you think is the right one and which one do you think is the wrong one? See, in this one statement is false. That is the clue that I can provide. So, in this one statement is false. So, I want you all to guess which is that one statement which is false. Any guesses? See, what did I say? What happens in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha? Over there, is it? So, there is Firoz, option B, Yash, option C. Is it option B or option C? First, just I want you to tell, is this first statement true or false? Is the first statement true or false? Is it true or false? See, in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, what happens over there? The land degradation, does it take place because of overgrazing? Is it? See, both the statement are false because see here it is ulta. Deforestation, it takes place in mostly in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha because of deforestation over there. Because of the deforest, no, no, yes, it is actually false. So, in the in these states, because of deforestation, the land degradation takes place. But in case of Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, over there, it's because of overgrazing. It's because of overgrazing. Overgrazing, the uh, this takes place. Land degradation occurs. So, option D is the right answer. Okay, so in this chapter, mostly, see, when it comes to soil part, over there, you will have to remember it. You will have to revise again and again to remember that which particular soil, where is it present? And that land degradation part also in which state? Because of which, what is the cause for land degradation? You will have to just remember that. For that, you will have to uh, revise again and again. Okay, that's why if you people want, if you student want, I can provide you a tabular column. Separately for the causes for land degradation in which state, what is the reason and the types of soil. Types of soil they might ask for 5 mark also. All together, once for all they might ask. Okay. So now next question, which one of the following is, is responsible for sheath erosion? So what was happening in sheath erosion? There was, there was, the soil was getting, what? Uh, it was getting degraded that uniformly. Right. So, option A says, it, is it because of underground water or is it because of the surface flowing water or is it because of the wind or is it because of the glacier? What is the right answer?
what is the right answer it is option b shivesh shivesha it is not option c it is option b because of the surface flowing water okay fine next question when running water cuts through clays clay soils and makes deep canals they lead to which type of erosion option a says gully erosion option d option b says sheet erosion option c says strip erosion and option d says none of the above so which one is the right answer yash says option b is it option b it is option a it is gully erosion it is gully erosion not sheet erosion okay so yeah we are done with this particular session we are done with this session and we have covered the entire chapter okay so once let me recall ki what have done in today's session so first we started with land resources right so before understanding about land resources i told you that the land is very important why is it very important because we we exist over here on land right and it is on land it is on land the crop cultivation and all takes place right so it is land which supports uh, the wildlife we human beings vegetation transportation communication and all that therefore land is very important right and then i told you in india in india what happens uh, the elevation is not same right the land elevation is not same the height it varies okay so wherein uh, that was i explained that topic under the concept the land uh, relief feature so india has got diverse land relief feature i told you that uh, therefore india has got mountain plateaus and plains and all that right okay shivesh when will you take next live session so tomorrow i'll be taking uh, next session students tomorrow i'll be taking biology i'll be uh, solving pyqs from life process chapter and control and coordination these two chapters i will pick up those top uh, questions that has been repeated again and again in last 10 years and yes yes you can ask your uh, doubt okay so where was i ha huh. we started with land resource right and then we started about the utilization of land that how was land being utilized in our country there was see we use land uh, it is for it is allocated for forest purpose forest region and then uh, agricultural purpose and non agricultural purpose like barren lands barren lands are those land which is left uncultivated for years right and then we even use land power for human benefits for human settlement for constructing buildings hospitals schools and all that and then we also have fallow land i explained you the difference between fallow land and uncultivated land also right and then we saw that how the land uh, how the land is being utilized how do we determine that pattern there were two factor one was physical factor and the other one was other one was a uh, human factors right so in physical factors with the help of topography by studying the climatic condition and about the soil we can study we can find out that how the land is being utilized right and then so which part you didn't get uh, yes i can repeat that again tomorrow she was 12 o'clock 12 o'clock okay that will be scheduled and the time table will be mentioned in the community okay and then yeah we saw that how uh, uh, the land degradation and then we also saw that where was i yeah i started with land resource we studied the importance of land we even spoke about land relief feature we even spoke about land relief feature and after land relief feature we started with the land utilization part wherein we saw that how the land is being utilized uh, in our country one was for forest agricultural and non agricultural purposes and all that and after that we saw we spoke about land degradation see because of human activity and certain natural forces the land was getting degraded uh, mostly because of deforestation overgrazing mining activities and all that and then we even saw that how can we prevent how can we prevent that land degradation also right and after that we started with the soil 
right we started with soil resources wherein we studied different types of soil right we studied about alluvial soil black soil laterite soil red soil red yellow soil arid and also forest soil and then we spoke about denudation of the soil right and then we even spoke about soil erosion the causes of soil erosion and how can we overcome soil erosion right so this was these topics were discussed in this particular session okay clear with that fine and then these are the methods how we can overcome soil erosion the soil conservation methods we studied these as well okay students don't worry about the notes all these notes will be provided fine and in case if you have any doubt from this chapter resource and development feel free to comment in the comment section so shall i end the session tomorrow uh, i'll be teaching biology right i'll be discussing some of the top previous year questions from the chapter life processes and control and coordination okay and yeah this is it for today's session i hope all your preparations are going well as your exams are nearing right how is your preparation going on all done so yeah now i'll be ending the session in case if you have any doubts feel free to that's okay yes in case if you have any doubt in case even when i'm explaining if you didn't uh, get any concept feel free to comment in comment section i can repeat the concept again okay fine so yeah shall i end the session okay students so yeah in case if you have any doubts related to this topic or even in life process chapter or control and coordination you comment in the comment section i will get back to you okay students so yeah thank you all all the best for your preparation see you all tomorrow and have a great day